welcome everyone to our 15th Digital Marketers graduation party. Uh, my name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder and CEO of BizHack Academy. And I'm so thrilled to welcome cohort 15 into our alumni ranks. We now have more than 600 folks who have graduated our five-week accelerated program, the Digital Marketers Edge. Um, I wanted to uh, introduce myself. My name is Dan Gretsch. Uh, I founded and I'm the CEO of BizHack uh, after a long career in journalism, working for NPR, the Miami Herald, the Washington Post, PBS. I transitioned into the business storytelling business, uh, working for a billion dollar company and two software startups. And now I am an entrepreneur and an educator teaching other business owners about digital marketing through BizHack. Uh, I went to Princeton, got a master's at FIU and am a Fulbright scholar. Enough about me, let's talk about the, the special guest for today, Cohort 15, also known as the Bizoomers. Every cohort names themselves and gets a logo. And uh, I'm really excited, uh, I love the name Bizoomers and uh, very excited to welcome our eight amazing Bizoomer presentations uh, and some of the results. Uh, I'm gonna introduce you to them and then we'll get to the started with the presentations right away. <clears throat> So the, the real heart of this graduation celebration are the actual results of the campaigns that the Bizoomer participants ran while in the course. Our belief at BizHack is there's only one way to learn how to market and it's by marketing, it's by doing it. And so we do require uh, in order to uh, get a certificate, all of our participants to run ads. And uh, we will actually see the results of those ads and the extraordinary case studies that came out uh, of that massive challenge uh, for, um, for folks to, to run a Facebook ad sometimes for the very first time. We're gonna then have a graduation celebration. We'll take our virtual hats and we'll toss them. And then we're gonna give uh, the Biz Hacker Award to our, uh, the student who, or the business owner who was voted by their peers as the top participant uh, in the cohort. We'll take a class photo. Uh, we'll have a thank you gifts raffle throughout. And then we're going to end with a very special musical surprise um, that uh, has become a little bit of a, a tradition now for us at BizHack. And uh, I'm really excited uh, to be able to welcome that to you. Um, so without further ado, I did want to start with our first round of thank you gifts. Um, so I'll read the name and then Lilia, if you could um, uh, share who the winner is and then we'll follow up with you all afterwards. We have your contact information and so we will be in touch. So the first is two quarts of Lucky Braids all-in-one shampoo. This is shampoo for horses. It can, yeah, it, it can also be used actually for other pets as dogs and for people with white hair. So that's amazing. So uh, the winner is uh, Lisa. We have a Lisa here in the call, although I want to uh, know your last name. Congratulations. All right, Lisa, congrats. We have a seasonal bundle of apple spice, spicy pumpkin pie, and wintry mint soaps. This is from John Thornton, the soap maker from Fragrant Formulas. Lucy Louis. Louis? Lucy Louis. Lucy Louis, perfect. We have a free page of copy and web content of up to 500 words to be used in a blog, email, or web page by Amy Palma from Amy Palma Media. To Jean Martin. We have a 30 minute consultation with social media review for building audience loyalty with Diane Mulligan of MNC Communications. Carrie McLeany. Yay, Carrie from cohort five. Great to see ya. Uh, we have a unique designed t-shirt from Other Heiss of Everybody Needs a Friend. Mario Coriel. And we'll be giving out more uh, thank you raffles later in the program. So a little bit more about how BizHack came to be here in October of 2020. Um, we started in 2017, a little over three years ago, 
We were named uh, shortly thereafter as a top startup in the Miami Herald Startup Pitch Competition. And we have been accelerated by the Goldman Sachs Knight Foundation and Entrepreneurs Accelerator programs. We're very proud uh, of that. Our educational partners include the largest educational institutions in South Florida and some three of the top 10 largest universities in the country, Broward College, FIU, and Miami-Dade College. And we've also partnered with a whole bunch of small business and minority business support organizations across Florida. Uh, and we're very, very proud of these affiliations um, because we rep about 87% uh, of our businesses are women or minority owned. So we're very proudly a minority uh, serving institution. And one of the reasons that we do this is because we actively encourage and invite minority and women owned businesses to apply for our program. And so if you know of anyone who runs a, a business and might be interested in participating in our program uh, and, and, being, they, and, 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 and applying for our scholarship program, would encourage you to please pass this link along. Referrals are our number one way uh, of getting folks into the course. Many of you are the beneficiaries of referrals of others. Uh, and so to the extent that you had a good experience and you wanna pay it forward, the scholarship program is a great way to do that. Um, we've had 550 businesses run through the Digital Marketers Edge program. They go from Fortune 500 companies to small businesses like Rafael Savino from Ascendance Studios, a studio in Doral, Florida that actually has been called out uh, by a national Google ad campaign for its excellence in digital marketing. We trained 112 businesses in 2019. They ran $17,000 in ads while in the course, and they made more than half a million dollars in sales for a average return on investment of 29 to one. And a little later, I'm gonna actually share with you the actual numbers from our current cohort. We'll see how they compared to the benchmark set in the pre-COVID days of 2019. So here, without further ado, is cohort 15 of the Digital Marketers Edge, the Bazoomers. Um, these are the amazing biz 30 businesses that were part of this program. Um, folks that were strangers when they started and had become fast friends, supporters, business partners, uh, offered shoulders to cry on. It's been an amazing emotional journey. One of the things I will say is I don't think we've ever had a cohort where more people cried during final presentations. Um, we'll see if we can hold it together for this round, but listen, we're all under tremendous stress. We're all under duress in our businesses. You know, we're in the midst of a really contentious presidential campaign. We're seeing social unrest and economic upheaval. I'm so honored that you guys felt like you had a safe space with BizHack where you could be yourself, where you could love and, and, and hurt openly and freely. Um, we had terrible tragedies befall some of our folks. We've had sickness, COVID, deaths of loved ones, death of businesses. It all happened in the last five weeks that we spent together. And I wanna honor the fact that you stuck it through and that you're here to the end and we love you for it. I also want you guys to know that we've never had a higher graduation rate than this cohort. The completion rate was higher this cohort than in any cohort we've ever had in the history of BizHack. And so I know a lot of you struggled, but I just want you to know you made it out the other side and I'm so, so proud of you. So these are your results. As a group, you ran 41 campaigns. You spent a little bit over $2,500, generated an extraordinary 195 leads and have already generated sales with a lifetime value of $35,000 for a total return on your ad spend of $13.9 for every $1 you spent. That's in five weeks. That's extraordinary. You're gonna see 
folks share some of those results in their presentations, but the majority of the folks, the results are still to come. You know, they got the first ad out, they might've gotten the second ad out. It's really the sales process that they're in, involved in right now and the lead generation process that we kicked off that will continue forever where the true ROI will come. So the fact that we could generate a 13.9 X ROI in five weeks is honestly nothing short of miraculous. And it's also just the beginning. You know, you're just getting started. So I'm so proud of you and congratulations for these numbers. So without further ado, we're gonna now get into the real life campaign presentations where folks talk about how they got these numbers. The format for these is I'm gonna do a brief introduction of the presenter, kind of a personal reflection of them and my interaction. I'll then stop sharing my screen. The presenter will share theirs and then they will present. And then their coach followed by Alex will then reflect on their presentation. In the case of Alex, uh, Alejandro, you didn't have a coach, so it'll just be Alex and I will, uh, everybody will be running their own slides with the exception of Christabel, I have your slides ready to go. So um, for those of you who are presenting, put your presentations in presentation mode, get ready to share your screens and try to keep to five minutes. Uh, we have a, an amazing roster of eight presenters and we uh, wanna try to wrap up uh, by about two. All right. This case study is from Mandy Jenkins of Mosquito Joe of Orlando, as well as Rochester, New York. Mosquito Joe is a pest control company and pest control companies because of people's quarantining in place are booming right now. We've had, uh, we had four pest control companies that were part of this semester's cohort. We've had more than a dozen who've gone through our program. The home services industry as a whole uh, are doing extraordinarily well. But I gotta say, Mandy has stood out for her incredible courage, her pluck, her hard work, her never say die attitude, and her refusal to take no from an answer. No for an answer. I'm so pleased and so honored to welcome Mandy Jenkins from Mosquito Joe of Orlando to be our, to present her case study. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Dan. Can everybody see my screen and hear me? We're seeing you great. Perfect. So uh, as Dan said, I'm Mandy Jenkins. I currently manage uh, the office operations for two different Mosquito Joe locations, Orlando and Rochester. And Mosquito Joe is um, an outdoor pest control franchise with over 250 locations uh, nationwide. Obviously the um, story of me began a lot earlier than the year 2016, um, but that definitely wouldn't fit inside a five minute presentation. So um, in 2016, I was a restaurant manager working 60 plus hours a week on the path to be the next uh, GM. Uh, the company that I was working for asked me to move to Florida and open the next location. At this point, true love wasn't in my life until this Florida move and then oops, I got pregnant. Um, so at that point, I didn't go back to the restaurant as my number one priority at that point was my daughter. But of course, being the workaholic that I am, I found a job that intended that I intended to keep for a short term. Um, I started working for Mosquito Joe in Palm Beach, where I was uh, a phone answerer, so to speak. And then, oops, I did it again another baby on the way, 2019. So here comes 2020, babies born, COVID, my husband lost his job. And then at that point as well, my work environment still was toxic. I was drained and I took a leap of faith. Um, on a Thursday, I quit my job with Mosquito Joe, um, that specific location. And on the Following Friday, like the next day, I was offered another job with a different Mosquito Joe location. That was June 1st of this year, and I couldn't be happier that I took this chance. 
The problem that brought me to BizHack is that the sales in the Orlando territory were flat. The solution was my boss said to me, why don't you sign up for this course and learn digital marketing? The result, holy Toledo, this course has a lot of information. I can't wait to actually understand it all. But within the case study, I developed a persona, created an audience and ran a video ad. My initial ad geared for video views was the first creative I ever made. I only spent $44.62 and received over 2000 impressions. This was my true aha moment. To have other professionals, coaches, peers around me give this such positive reaction to my ad gave me a reason to believe that I'm actually capable of this. The second go around of my ad wasn't exactly the results that I wanted, but I still only spent $21.59, received 1,017 impressions, 10 clicks, and two leads. But my biz hack experience at this point was priceless. What did I learn? Well, what didn't I learn would probably be a better question as this was such great information supporting tools and resources. I was introduced to the Facebook business manager, which I had no idea that that existed. A pixel isn't just something regarding a picture element. And the biggest one is that digital marketing is not easy. No matter how smart you are, you have to have a passion to drive your growth. And what's next for me? Working on new punchlines, creating skyscraper content. And if they'll have me, Dan, I plan to attend uh, the cohort 16. But this experience was just not business for me. This has helped me on my journey to find Mandy again. And I'm not going to be the first person to cry. <laughs> <laughs> this has helped me find myself. This year has been so tough for so many, but I've struggled personally with myself and this five week experience has really paved that walkway for me. So for me to everyone in BizHack cohort 15, thank you. Mandy, thank you. You showed up with uh, so much heart and so authentically um, with your story, a beautiful story. I mean, congratulations for your children and uh, so, uh, you've gone through so much in the last couple of years. and. Uh, it's, it's truly amazing. And uh, you created the, the ad very early on, and it was so creative. Uh, you know, in the beginning of the ad, we can't figure out that it's about Mosquito Joe. <laughs> and it was really nice. It was really clever. Um, and, uh, you know, I just congratulate you on, on all your hard work. And to me personally, it's such um, like an honor that you would like to come back to the course and listen to me again, <laughs> doing my lectures and stuff. So that to me is uh, very humbled by, um, you know, um, your, your approach to, to want to come back. But anyway, congratulations for, for all you've done. Thank you, Alex. And, and Mandy, congratulations. I, I think uh, we had already talked about how just great of a job you did um, just, just coming through the entire program. And we knew the different kinds of frustration that you had to, to endure. But you're a rock star and you have such a determination I wish I could just hire some folks who, are, who have this kind of determination like yourself. Um, I think you're really going to do well. And so I'm looking forward to what you would be able to add to this um, uh, takeaways that you've already, uh, you, you've already gotten in this program in the next, uh, next one. So congratulations. Thank you, Ricardo. And Mandy, welcome to BizHack 16.0. <laughs> you are a glutton for punishment, but welcome back. Uh, I know we, we have an admissions process for, for everybody we let in, but uh, you uh, are absolutely signify everything that we look for in the BizHack uh, participants. So congratulations and welcome back. I look forward, we all look forward to working with you for another cohort. Thank you, Dan. All right. So um, just a quick heads up, guys, after you do your presentation, please stop sharing so that when the coaches reflect, uh, the reflection can be full screen. 
Um, so when you when, when you guys finish your presentations, if you remember, just go ahead and uh, stop sharing. So then uh, when the coaches talk, they get the full screen. Um, and we're gonna go now to Christabel. Christabel, uh, I'm gonna manage your slides. I have them ready to go. Um, yeah. So we'll get, we'll get started momentarily. Sound good? Yes. Excellent. And um, we'll do it this way. We'll have Alex, you'll come first after each of the presenters and then the coach follow up. Does that sound good? Okay, I see you nodding. That's good. Yep. All right, perfect. So it'll be Alex first and then the coach reflect at the end. All right, uh, let me get my screen sharing up. All right. Hi, guys. So Hang on, before uh, you go, I'm going to introduce yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> this, this is my chance to talk about how amazing you are. Okay. All right. This is a very special case study for BizHack because this is our very first international business to present during our graduation. And what's so extraordinary about this particular business is where our amazing entrepreneur is located. She lives in Ghana in West Africa. And when she reached out to me before the course, Christabel shared with me that her brother had put her uh, in touch with BizHack because he's in the uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem worldwide and had heard about what the work BizHack was doing. She was a former Unilever employee uh, who had decided to take her considerable skill, talent, uh, and entrepreneurial um, grit and use it to build Flow Care Beauty, which is a woman's e-commerce product. Now, first of all, this course is out of reach for most Ghanaians. It's, it's, it's in US dollars and Christabel qualified for a scholarship through our scholarship program for female and minority entrepreneurs, which allowed her to attend the course and then had what were just breathtaking results, even despite the fact that she hasn't yet launched her website. And so it's with incredible respect and deference and awe that I welcome our first international business presenter, Christabel Afori of Flowcare Beauty. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Okay, so Dan has already done the introduction. I'm Christabel Ofori, I'm from Ghana. So my company name is actually Afkalo Ventures, but I have two brands, which is Flow Care Beauty and Flow Foods. And for the Facebook ad campaign, I decided to go with Flow Care Beauty, which is our like flagship brand. So I'll zoom right into the story of me. Um, I'm a chemical engineer. I worked with Unilever, like you mentioned, for seven years. And then I started, but I started my own business three years ago whilst I was still in Unilever. And I left my full-time job just last year, December 31st, to focus on my business. I knew we're going into a new decade, 2020. I was just ready to take on the business world and then COVID happened, but we'll talk about that later. So I'm also a mom of three. I have three adorable and energetic boys. Next slide then, yes. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, I started my skincare business actually after I had my first son. So just a little over a year after I had had my first son, I struggled with getting um, skincare products for him. He had really dry and sensitive skin. And a lot of the products on our market are imported brands, popular brands that most of you probably know, but they don't necessarily work well for our skin type and the weather conditions here. I struggled to find options that could work. And then through my research and my chemical engineering, I tried something with shea butter, which is quite common here, local ingredient here. And it worked and that's how my skincare business started. When it worked for my son, I made a few and shared with other friends who had children. 
they gave great feedback and so I started my business from there. Um, another thing about me is that I love to travel and I was telling Dan that I've actually been to Florida before. So I have a piece of my heart with Florida. I love to try new things and meet new people. So I was writing into the real life campaign for the campaign, um, we had two campaigns that we ran. The first was the brand awareness ad, and then we did the lead generation ad. So in total, I spent $90. I spent $40 on the first, $50 on the first ad and $40 on the lead generation ad. I reached over 14,000 people through my ads. And for my lead generation ad, I actually generated 137 leads which I'm still contacting. I've actually not finished contacting them. <laughs> so as at the time I made this slide, I had made $20 in sales, but I can say that as of today, I've made $100 in sales from the leads I generated through the Facebook ad. So aside these sales, there are 137 potential customers who have given like positive feedback that they are willing to buy the products. So the next slide, um, my biggest ahas from the program were learning about the importance of customer persona. So I've done a few other programs and they usually talk about customer persona, but not in the detail that we did with this course. I mean, it was really revealing, learning about all the habits of your customer, where they go to for information, how they do their buying. And it was really, really um, eye-opening for me. I also learned how to create a custom audience on Facebook. And I also learned about Facebook um, business manager. I didn't even know there was anything like that. Um, I learned how to have a good call to action. And I would say that my coach also really helped me with that. My teammates helped me with that. And that's how come I was able to generate all those 137 leads because we were taught how to generate a good call to action that will like propel or push your potential customers to click on your link and try to buy from you. I learned the difference between running an ad and just boosting a post. So before I just used to boost posts and it was not yielding much results. And the amazing thing is that I created my own video. So all the videos I made for my Facebook ads, I created myself with the help of this hack. So going forward, what's next for me? I'm definitely going to make more videos. I'm going to perfect my video making skills. I'm going to, I need to upgrade my website. So I had made a one page website that doesn't really function. And we've learned so much about Facebook pixel, SEO and the likes. So I'm going to upgrade my website so I can try out all these hacks. Um, we were taught about uh, MailChimp and other programs for email marketing. I'm going to start working on that by Monday. I'm definitely going to run more ads and sell as much as I can. So that's basically it for me. It was a great program. I'm so happy I joined. I mean, it was really intense combining it with three boys and everything, but I'm glad about the results and I know that more sales are going to come. Yay. Christabel, uh, thank you so much for joining it. Uh, it was such a surprise to have someone from Ghana join for me. Uh, I, uh, my father was a diplomat and I lived in Ghana for three years. The first three years of my life were in Ghana. And I actually do have some memories from way back then. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it was amazing to have you join us and congrats for your incredible success with the leads. Um, I do think you do have an opportunity to automate with MailChimp, you know, like a whole email automation funnel from your ads to your emails, but also I think on your website, you can also uh, improve the e-commerce aspect so people have a more direct way of, of buying and purchasing uh, from you. So it's a lot of work, but I think, uh, you know, um, now that you've learned about Facebook advertising, I think you are uh, you might show up in the press in Ghana as to someone who like cracked the code on, on Facebook. <laughs> Someday I'm gonna read, read an article about you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Christabel, this girl right here, congratulations. So Christabel, um, we would, so I'm, I was her coach and we, I'm still her coach. I'm still your coach girl. <laughs> um, and 
we would meet, she would schedule her meetings at 8 PM Miami, Florida time. And I'm sitting here doing the math and I'm like, that's like midnight Ghana time. What is she doing up at midnight? And so I asked her and she says, you know, I get to bed a little bit early and then I wake up at midnight for our call for an hour long call. And I just, that point alone completely showed me your determination and how passionate you are to make this work. So I just have to commend you for that because my jaw was on the floor when she told me that. Um, and then, so in, in one of our, in one of our coaching sessions, she tells me, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm doing so great. I got 18 leads and I understood 18 and I was jumping up and down. You have 18 leads. That's amazing. She goes, no, 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 Tati, 80 leads. She had already garnered 80 leads and you had just started the ad probably, I don't know, a few days prior. So I can tell you that if you're determined, if you're willing to lose a little bit of sleep, <laughs> no, but really, if you put the time and effort into this, you can really truly find the results like Christabel experienced. Um, I'm in a similar category as she is. So I work with women's wellness products and, you know, Fl uh, Flow Care Beauty is more on the beauty side, but there's a lot of similarities. What you mentioned about understanding your audience and the persona, um, the beauty of what Facebook allows you to do is to really truly target your honest and true customers. And I think that Christabel did an amazing job at doing that. Um, I'm excited and I welcome you to come to Florida whenever you desire, because you will definitely have a huge crew, open arms, welcoming, welcoming you here. And I can't wait, like echoing what Alex said, I can't wait for you to get your MailChimp set up and your website set up with SEO, because I have a feeling that this is going to be incredible and expect me in Ghana one day. I will go visit you. <laughs> Congratulations. You did amazing. I'm so proud to have been your coach. And one of the things that made this so special is that Tati is herself working for an e-commerce uh, woman's care uh, company called Happy V. So uh, it was a, a really extraordinary match of interests and an alignment of, of expertise. Um, yeah. Christabel, we are so proud of you. Um, now go close those sales, okay? Yeah. You, have 100, <laughs> you have 137 leads. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us just really quickly before we wrap up what specifically you're doing uh, to close those sales? Um, so, so far, like I mentioned in the lab, I've reached out to just about 90 and it was through WhatsApp messages. So I've been following up with them. So like I mentioned, I've, all, I've sold 100 now, but I have about 10 people that have said over the weekend, they want to buy a few products. So for now, in closing the list, just on um, WhatsApp messages, but I'm hoping that for the about 47 people I've not contacted yet, I'll just go straight out and use the MailChimp so that's easier to track. You know, I would say all of the above, MailChimp via email, uh, WhatsApp, and please don't be hesitant to pick up the phone and call. Mm, okay. That will that will absolutely convert you two to three times as many people. I forgot to mention one thing that I think it's worth mentioning. Christabel actually set up one of her campaigns using WhatsApp business. So I thought this was really clever and we had actually never explored that in BizHack, at least not in my participation with BizHack, where since she didn't have a website, she needed to drive her, her viewers of her ads somewhere. And so she opted to explore WhatsApp business, which would allow her to have one-on-one -on -one communication with those customers. When you're dealing with a volume that's not thousands of people, that's something that's possible and doable. And I thought that was a great workaround for not having a website. Yeah, it's really extraordinary what you've done, Christabel, without having a website. It shows the power of social media. It also shows the buying powder, uh, power of ads in overseas markets. And we're actually gonna hear more about that uh, from another presenter. But one last thing I'll just say is the lesson here, guys, is pick up the phone. The most effective sales tactic, despite digital marketing, is a phone call. And if it's a phone call from the founder with a story like you have, and the other piece of good news before we wrap up is you have three very inexpensive employees that you could immediately call upon to make phone calls, which are your three children. So I, I recommend you employ them for it. Okay. Congratulations. 
Thank you. Yay. All right, I'm gonna share my screen for our next presenter. Great job, Christabel. Um, Christabel, hang on one sec. Let me just, ah. I have to take down hers and put back up mine. Okay. Well, wow, Jessica, this is a beautiful picture of you. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so Jessica, Graham, you're up next with, um, so just be ready to share your screen. I'm gonna do a quick intro and then hand it over to you. This case study is from Jessica Graham of Phoenix Consulting. And she represents one of BizHack's favorite ideal customer, which is the marketing agency or the communications agency. I met Jessica through our affiliation with the Public Relations Society of America. She attended a masterclass group coaching session that I hosted, and I'm so excited that she decided to join BizHack to help her not only integrate the work that her agency was doing between traditional PR communications and digital marketing, but also to allow her to better serve her clients and grow that client base through more targeted lead generation campaigns run on behalf of Phoenix Consulting. Without further ado, Jessica Graham of Phoenix Consulting and my fellow PR professional and PRSA member. Thank you, Dan. All right, I'm going to share here. Hopefully this will work. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here today and to share with you what I learned and what I did through our class, which was phenomenal. So uh, first, I'll start with the story of me. I have uh, more than 25 years in strategic communications, uh, have worked many, many places in Charlotte and the Southeast. Uh, and my whole focus is PR and everything on that communication spectrum. So uh, public relations, social media, internal communications, crisis communications, all of that. The one hole that I really did have was digital marketing. So I do a lot of social media work with my clients, uh, do a lot of strategy work on social media strategy, but I had never really gotten into advertising through social media. So when I went to Dan's workshop, it was awesome and it really spoke to me and I thought, you know what, I'm going to take a chance. Um, and because it, it, as he mentioned, gives me a chance to really deepen what I'm doing with my clients. I talk a lot about how traditional PR isn't traditional PR anymore. It's all of that earned and owned uh, media content. And this absolutely falls into that place. Uh, one thing that I always try to mention when I am talking about my firm, which I started about three years ago, uh, the name is Phoenix Consulting. Folks don't often know how to pronounce it. Uh, long story short, Phoenix, if you look it up in Urban Dictionary, is basically a strong, confident woman with a lot of blonde hair. So that's me. Uh, and that is Phoenix Consulting. So let's talk about what I did in this class. I did do uh, some advertising work around my business, around Phoenix Consulting. The results were okay. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But what I really wanted to talk about is what I was able to do for a client. Um, it just so happened that right in the middle of class, as we were running ads and I was learning how to do it and what to do, I had a client who had a real problem. And so I said, hey, why don't you give me a few bucks? I'll see what I can do with this new advertising thing I'm learning. And it just went beautifully. So uh, what we wanted to do, uh, my client is Middle Sea Jazz Club. It's a phenomenal jazz club in Charlotte, North Carolina, which, by the way, live streams. So all of you should look at Middle Sea Jazz Club uh, online. Google it. They had Keith David coming to town in Charlotte. Keith David, if you look at his face, if you hear his voice, you know him. He was in The Thing. He um, was the voice behind Ken Burns' Civil, uh, not Civil War series, but the War series. He's very well known, a great, great singer, which we may not all have known. So they had five performances of Keith David coming to Charlotte and were having a trouble selling tickets. It's COVID. It's hard to get people to come out right now. Um, they are very, very careful with their COVID precautions, but we wanted and needed to sell some tickets. So what we did is we ran two ads for them. One was an awareness video ad, show you that 
in a second. And then one was a Friday night event specific ad. So we were really talking about that Friday night, which was lower with tickets. Our results, I'll talk much more about those in a minute, um, but long story short, we had 158 event responses, which is huge. So my first ad was a video awareness ad. I made a video using the tools that we learned about, which were phenomenal, um, put in my audience, which again was really, really important. Who might like to see Keith David? Who might be a fan of jazz? One mistake I made is I listed employers jazz instead of interests jazz. So I inadvertently targeted people who work in the jazz industry, which was not what I intended to do at all. And when I looked at my reach, it, the system was trying to tell me this isn't a great reach, like we're not going to do great with this. And I ignored it, um, which I'm prone to do. I get in there and I just want to experiment. And so we did well, but it didn't do as well as I wanted it to do. So for the second ad, we actually had a video of Keith David talking to the audience saying he couldn't wait to come to Charlotte. We, I tried something new. I jumped into an event ad, um, which we hadn't even talked about in class, but I thought I'd give it a shot. We had a Friday night Facebook event page, and I used that to generate the ad. I fixed my jazz problem and tied it to interest of jazz music. And believe it or not, they told me because I did it right, the system told me that my potential reach would be 360,000 people, which was fantastic. So we ran with it. So here are my results for the two different ads. $75 on the first one, we ended up with about a 50% growth in overall ticket sales after we ran that ad. Now I will say I can't draw a direct line between the ad and the ticket sales because we did a lot of other promotion at the same time as well. But I know there's a correlation when you look at these numbers. If you look at the second ad, we spent a little more than 80 bucks. We had 15,000 impressions, 158 event responses. It was huge. Uh, it went really, really well. And what happened after that ad ran, it, and by the way, Facebook ranked that ad as above average in all of its rankings. We had 190% growth in ticket sales. Two of the five shows completely sold out. And Friday night, which was my focus for that ad, had 250% growth in ticket sales. Woohoo! We are very excited. So campaign results. Uh, campaign results, you can see my funnel. Um, the 23 customers I pulled because that's how many tickets sold. Again, that's not a direct line to the ad, but I didn't also talk about any of the other events that might have generated ticket sales from that ad. So um, it's a good estimate of about 20, uh, 23 customers out of that ad. But just as importantly, and maybe more so, is look at the Facebook page likes for the club. Their followers were up 600%. Their Instagram followers went up. So again, we were doing other things on social media while running these ads, but absolutely the ads pulled these kinds of numbers. And now they've got permanent followers that are watching everything they're doing through social media and hopefully going to additional shows. So my biggest ahas, uh, first and foremost, audience absolutely matters and the videos are really important. Um, we've learned great tools on how to create videos and they made all the difference in the world. I've decided that if you have a, an artist talking to folks and saying, I can't wait to come and this is what my show is gonna be, that's better than just using stock photos and making your own video. So we have some real specific learnings for that client that we're taking forward. I've mentioned this, we learned awesome tools, Lumen five is the best. Look it up if you don't use it already to make videos. And then social advertising has unanticipated benefits. Again, we were going for ticket sales, but if you look at those Facebook likes and Instagram likes and all that, huge, huge benefit. So I learned a ton. Those were just my top three. So what's next? Uh, I'm going to try some LinkedIn advertising for my business. I think that is more in line with who my customer is. Um, I am offering my work in digital marketing now as a new consulting service that I can offer my clients. And I just talked to this client, by the way, this morning, and it looks like we're going to start some additional ads today. So um, I'm moving on with that. And then I want to absolutely continue learning. I am not the master of this at all, made a lot of mistakes, but have learned so much. I want to absolutely continue um, polishing. And that's me. Thank you. Thanks. Jessica, congrats. I mean, your energy is, uh, is contagious. I mean, uh... <laughs> You know, you have such a passion for, for what you do and this, and I'm so glad that uh, you learned and that you were able to apply this uh, towards a client. I mean, what an incredible case study, uh, great results, and uh, I think you're just poised for success now. Uh, so Thank good you. luck. Thank you.
Oh, Jessica, congratulations, you know, um, just working with you uh, through through this uh, five week, the, I, I saw so much um, in terms of growth and you taking that leap and um, with that ad, it really paid off. And, and so I'm excited for what the future holds for you. I know you're going to do absolutely great. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Bravo. One PR professional to another. I'm so proud of the work you did. It's not easy to get those kind of results. And, um, you know, one thing that I'll just say, um, when you run an ad campaign, you get what's called an organic bump. And an organic bump means that people will see your ad and then they'll Google you and they'll go to your website. And we have seen clients where as much as 70% of their sales are attributable to the organic bump and not the actual ad itself. And we've also seen events where they had a rush uh, in the evening of the event that could not be explained anyway except for by the ad itself. So people might make note, they don't want to make a commitment, and then they just show up and buy it at the door. So when you're dealing with events and when you're dealing with um, you know, really any product that can be bought online, e-commerce, you, in order to fully measure the impact of a campaign, you must take into account people reaching you through other channels, but that learned about you through the ad. And so you might ask, well, how do you track that? And there are very complex ways that are hard for small businesses to do. So the easiest way to track that is to give an exclusive offer on Facebook. So if you offer an offer only available through Facebook ads and then people use that or ask for that offer, then you know that came through the ad. But Jessica, congratulations. And I'm so excited to hear what the next chapter brings. All right, so next up is Monica Glacier. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick intro and then Monica, be ready to share your amazing presentation. This case study is from Monica Glacier of People First Media. And I met Monica through her amazing husband and business partner, David Wells, uh, who's here today. David and I took the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Accelerator Program together. And we have been friendly and talking and meeting at networking events for years. And it is such a joy, Monica and David, to be able to now be a part of your entrepreneurial journey and more than just friends at networking events. So uh, Monica is an extraordinary video editor, uh, and as you're gonna see, an amazing marketer, uh, Monica Glacier of People First Media. Thank you, Dan. Let's see if I can share the screen here. Everybody see the presentation? Yep. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Monica Glacier with People First Media. The story of me um, is also the story of movie picture rental and of David Wells, as Dan suggested. He's my husband and my partner. So for the past 14 years, People First Media has operated as the little sibling to moving picture rental. Movie picture rental is a film rental business here in South Florida. And we've received most of our leads and contacts and our work through uh, moving picture rental. But um, that, that has changed, as you'll see a little bit later. Uh, paralleling this is the story of me. I'm from a family of creatives and artists, architects, actors. And I, in my family, I've always kind of been in the shadows for my creative abilities. And I've uh, decided uh, about 20 years ago to step out of those shadows and go to film school. So this year, coronavirus has heavily impacted the production business here in South Florida. And with that, movie picture rental sales as well. So People First Media has had to step out of the line, out, into, out of the shadows into the spotlight, seeking our own clients and our own work. And not to be overly dramatic, it is now time for People First Media and for me to take the reins and to show how we can contribute to the world. And we're in the process of doing that now. 
People First Media is a South Florida production company with an eye for stories that get results about people and companies engaged in the business of life, tales of perseverance and possibility, risk and opportunity, challenge and change, and hopefully reward. And, uh, but we still need to get the word out. So uh, why did I take this course? I wanted to be knowledgeable about the digital marketing process. I wanted to uh, expand our awareness and our reach. I also wanted to connect to people who, wanted, who need video content. So uh, our problem was lead generation. Um, and we, our solution with this BizHack class was to create aware, an awareness campaign and also a lead generation campaign. With our coach, Ricardo, we created a seven essential video facts um, white paper to inspire interest in clicking on our ad. Well, we were very surprised and happy with our results. Our video campaign uh, video views received 8,500 views and our campaign lead generation received 1,050 views and three leads. What did we learn? Well, uh, some insights are that our target audience was on point. We um, received, the, the leads we received were business people in South Florida. Our awareness, uh, our messaging uh, was on point as 98% of the people who watched the video watched the entire thing through. Our marketing uh, form needs some work, uh, we think, because we received 10 click throughs, but only three people actually filled out forms. Other insights, Dave really captured audiences. Um, through plays were off the charts. 98% of the people watch the video completely through. So we're seeing spokesperson in his future, uh, further YouTube videos and other maybe webinars. I also learned a lot about white papers and downloadables. They really need to be substantial and offer really helpful information that's brand specific uh, to a potential client. My biggest ahas, the biggest one was that digital marketing is a measurable process. And for creative types like me, that's really important to be able to go back to the data and say what needs to be changed and what worked and what didn't. This whole process recalibrated my creativity. I faced a lot of fear as an editor producing these kinds of uh, social media ads, but we got through it and we had a lot of success. I love Canva. Canva is a free program and it makes me look like a creative genius. And I realized there's so much work for us to do as People First Media. So what's next? Google My Business. Uh, we're definitely going to do an ad campaign on LinkedIn because I, we feel that that fits uh, one of our personas better. Uh, potentially a website redo, mapping out our customer journey, maximizing our social media, webinars, YouTube videos, the sky's the limit. There's so much potential and possibility for us. And in closing, I just wanna thank uh, Alex, Ricardo, you Dan, all the coaches and my fellow Bazoomers. I've had an incredible five weeks with you guys and it's really been a, a time of personal growth. And I, I really appreciate the time, thank you. Monica, congratulations, uh, I'm so proud of you. Uh, you joined towards the end of uh, BizHack 14 and then uh, you came back for BizHack 15. And so, um, you know, um, um, it's, it's impressive what you did with the uh, white paper. You can, and the fact that you understand that marketing is measurable and that you can map out the customer journey. And so you can now plan out future downloadable assets. You can even create annual uh, assets, like annual reviews of stuff. Um, and just map out a whole journey. And you know, when you do you redo your website, I mean, I think what's more important than redoing a website is working on landing pages because each of these downloadable assets would go on a landing page and you want them to convert on those landing pages. So in the end, it doesn't really matter so much what your website looks like. What's more important are those pages that convert. So good luck. Thank you. Monica, you know already how proud I am of you and just the opportunity for us to have worked together. Met David, you guys are really awesome. And I think uh, you stay focused on on those assets of values, those high value content that you can share with, uh, with your audience. I think you're gonna do absolutely, absolutely incredible. And so David, 
kudos to you. Um, it, you have you have such a an incredible husband that works very well with the camera, and I think um, that could be that could mean a lot for you guys if you use him up. You, you got to get him in front of the camera, get him to talk to um, to to the audience because they seem to love they seem to love it. They yeah. seem to love it absolutely. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, I wanted to invite David to comment. David Wells, my friend, welcome, uh, partner to Monica in life and in and and in business. Let's see. You seem to be unmuted, Dave. Can you talk? Uh oh. We're not hearing you. We'll give it a second more. Anyhow. Um, he's very excited to talk, probably. He is. I think he's talking, but it's not coming through. We're not hearing it, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, well, Monica, are you in the same spot as David? No, he's actually on location on a shoot, a film shoot. So that's maybe why he's having trouble speaking. All right. Um, well. You know, Monica, one thing that I just wanted you to mention. Oh yeah, we can hear you. Cool. All right, David, what do you got to say? I <clears throat> have caught a couple of the presentations and I'm extremely impressed. The, the passion and the spirit of everybody in this group is so contagious and amazing. Um, it's really, really, really special. And I have not been a part of, of Dan's program. And um, I just can't say enough great things about it. Uh, you all are gonna do so well because you've all worked so hard. So congratulations to everybody. And you know, all the success in the world. And Monica and I both hope we, uh, we get to work with all of you in the future in any way, shape or form. And uh, this is your chance to get some brownie points. Anything you want to say to Monica directly? <laughs> I just sent her some text, but hey, Monica, I'm, I'm speaking softly because they're recording dialogue in the next room. We're doing a TV commercial today in the Grove. Um, Monica, I'm so proud of you. about it. That was like the best part, you know? And then getting to present and just the work was extraordinary. So, hey guys, they hear me. I have to go, I have to go. Or hear me over here. Okay, bye. Um, I think he said very nice things, but it kind of broke up a little. <laughs> but Monica, give him a big kiss when you see him at home. That was very sweet. I will, thank you. Yeah. All right, <laughs> uh, Dave's such a good guy. Um, and, and obviously it was such a pleasure to get to know you with this experience. This case study is from Ted Van Cleve, who is a fine artist turned photographer. And one of the things that made Ted very memorable when he and I first met is this is a very focused artist. When you meet creative types, you sometimes find them to not be as great at the business side of things. And Ted is anything but. He was so focused. He had been running ads. He had been promoting his work. Um, he has an incredible story of converting from fine art to photography and making it work for him almost overnight. And then of course, the images as you're about to see are just stunningly beautiful. So for a man who combines left brain and right brain better than almost anyone I've ever met, it's my pleasure to welcome Ted Van Cleve of Ted Van Cleve Photography. Uh, thank you, Dan. Let me do a screen share real quick here. Let's see. And I think it's in present mode. And there we go. We're good to go. Can everybody see that okay? Yes, we can. So uh, where are we? That wasn't the beginning. I'm sorry. One moment. So uh, as Dan mentioned, I'm an artist. I, uh, and I've always done photography. I've always been interested in it. And, and, and 
years ago, I used to sell some uh, prints, but I uh, migrated towards sculpture. I like the hands-on sculpture, and that's what I've been doing for the last 10 years. And I had a 2020 lined up that was amazing. I had new galleries, uh, plus my regular galleries. I had really big uh, art fairs and shows lined up. And then the pandemic hit, the galleries closed, the art fairs closed. And so I did my pandemic pivot over to my photography. Uh, I felt that the photography, uh, you know, it's underutilized, uh, their assets. Uh, that are underutilized and it's easier for people to purchase prints uh, over online, over the internet than 3D sculptures. It's easy for people to grasp what it will look like in their home. And so I set up a, a brand new website that's just for my photography. I have a separate one that's for my sculptures and started advertising in March on Facebook. But uh, I ran into a lot of issues, and uh, mostly it's a lack of knowledge. Facebook will take your money, but there wasn't any real easy way. It's not so intuitive. So I was trying to figure out the ways to do the best ads, and I was really very frustrated with that. Uh, so my ad execution was bad, and I thought the platform was confusing, and I, I didn't have a good uh, network of support. I reached out to some friends, Carrie McClenny, who's on here now today, uh, who was, I think, in cohort five. She recommended BizHack highly, and uh, I immediately took a look and uh, signed up. And uh, through, the, through the classroom knowledge, I was able to create uh, better ads, all types of different ads. And the main skills I think I learned were testing, testing, and testing uh, through the classroom, through Alex, and uh, through my one-on-one -on -one with Cheryl. Uh, I was taught how I could test ads in as little as 24 hours to just try to refine it and get the very best one. Um, I'm also testing other things. I tested landing pages. I haven't even done the forms yet. I'm going to be doing that next. I set up e-commerce purchasing capability on my website so people can actually just go there and uh, purchase a print rather than emailing me. Uh, and I set up live chat this week on my site. But I also found out that... Uh, a lot of people like to interact with the artist. It's not really such a commodity that the people don't want to just hit the button and buy it often, especially for a $1,400 sale. And so um, I'm going to test both. I'm going to set up two websites, one with uh, e-commerce where you can just hit a button and, and uh, purchase from me. And the other one would be where you contact me uh, to chat or online or call me to, to make the purchase. Um, I don't have to have a lot of sales to make money. Uh, fortunately, they're extremely profitable and they run anywhere, five sizes, they run anywhere from $100 to $1,450. And often people buy multiple prints. And so uh, initially in week three, I had a sale. I had a $300 budget and I sold a three, uh, $450 print, uh, which was a profitable $350. So I made a little money on that and paid for my ad budget. Um, I think I'm gonna run three ads in the future uh, as testing. I'm gonna be testing all types of different things, but uh, I have a click-through ad running right now. I have a view-through ad running right now. And uh, I'm also gonna start collecting emails for a new newsletter that I'll start doing. So uh, these things are really, you know, aren't overly important to the class here. They're just for me as milestones and data points for me to learn more and to see uh, what's profitable. I did bump my ad budget up. I tripled it to 1050. Uh, my my view-throughs are low cost. My click-throughs are low cost. Uh, again, I'm not. A, it's not really a commodity where I'm selling a lot of things, but if I sell five to 10 prints a month, I will be extremely happy. So my biggest uh, class insights, uh, I did improve my ads quite a bit through uh, motion and music, uh, made them uh, much nicer. Um, and uh, I can apply these advertising principles to the social media platforms. Uh, and then I've also learned how to craft all types of different ads and testing, that's the main thing. And, I, and so I have confidence to move forward because before I just felt I was making costly mistake after costly mistake. So what's next for me? Uh, I, I redid my website just recently and added the e-commerce and the chat. So I'll be completing the SEO on that. 
for me, I'll be exploring LinkedIn a lot and Pinterest some. LinkedIn, um, I want to target interior designers. The reason why is if somebody buys their pen for me off of Facebook, they'll likely only buy them once. But interior designers resell my product. And so they'll buy it over and over again for different clients. And so LinkedIn will be the direction that I put the most uh, investment into next. I'm uh, continuing to test ads, of course, new offerings, uh, new landing pages. Uh, press releases do really well for me. So I'll be sending out press releases. I've already uh, got that lined up to do next. And of course, the list never ends. And I, and I actually would like to make more photos soon. So um, it's been a, a, a really a big pleasure to uh, work with everybody. Alex is a great uh, teacher. Cheryl is amazing on one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And of course, the biggest thing is that I have a network now of uh, friends and fellow uh, Zoomers who we can reach out to each other and help each other. And so that's very important for me also. So thank you very much, everybody. I really enjoyed it immensely and hope to stay in touch with everybody. Ted, thank you uh, so much for uh, your participation in class. You've been such a positive and supportive uh, influence uh, for everybody. And congratulations on uh, getting your sale. And, and I like how you're really tracking everything that you're doing with your ads and how that's working. And, and the fact that you reinvested what you earned into more advertising. And I hope that works out well for you. I'm an amateur photographer myself, uh, although I don't sell my prints. And so I'm very, you know, I admire that you have taken that step to actually go out and sell your prints. And I think it's wonderful that you can uh, make money doing that. And that's, uh, that's really great. So congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Ted, I'll just say a couple of words. Um, it was really my honor to work with somebody as talented as you are. It, it was really um, my pleasure. And it was also great to watch you grow um, as we, as the class went on and and um, you are a perfectionist and I love that, but it also, you know, created some learnings for you, some things you had to give up. And, and that was just beautiful to watch that unfold and, and watch your results come in. So thank you again. I'm so glad to work with you. Well, thanks for uh, using the hammer <laughs> <laughs> and well, strongly like encouraging me to open up a little bit and try new things. And so it paid off well, and I appreciate that. I think so, good. Well said, everybody. Thank you, Ted. Congratulations on your success and stay in touch. Let us know how your sales go. I will. Thank you, Dan. And I will say that we're going to have uh, the grand prize raffle item is from Ted. And so I'm excited to, to share that a little later in the presentation. All right. <clears throat> so uh, our next presenter is Christina Rodriguez. I'm going to call her up and uh, do a quick intro. Christina Rodriguez is a extraordinary entrepreneur whom I met through a program that we do together called the Venture Mentoring Team. The Venture Mentoring Team is a group of executives who choose to give back by mentoring young companies like Christina's and mine. And Mind and Melody is an extraordinary offering that has been forced to pivot in a very profound way because of COVID-19. And I know, Christina, this has been a really bumpy road for you for the last six months. Um, and I just want you to know personally uh, how much I admire your resilience and your commitment to serving some of our most vulnerable people. So you'll learn a little bit more about what Mind and Melody is all about. Christina Rodriguez, of Mind and Melody. Thank you, Dan. I'm just trying to uh, share my presentation here with you. All right. Can everybody see my presentation? Yes, we can. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that intro, Dan. It really means a lot. It has been very challenging through COVID, and I'll share a little bit of my experience. Um, so my name is Christine. I'm the president and co-founder of Mind and Melody, and we transform the lives of individuals living with neurological impairments through music, particularly 
um, seniors living with dementia and Alzheimer's. And in 2014, uh, we partnered with the FAU Memory and Wellness Center, a day center for people living with mem uh, for living with memory loss. And during the development of our program, there was a gentleman that I that I met there, and his name was David. And you can see him in this picture. And David uh, would sit in in that chair um, in the corner of, of the class, and he would often be hunched over, looking down, not making any eye contact, not playing any instruments or really engaging. And we thought that we were never gonna be able to reach him. But one day we found out that he was a professional violinist. So we brought in a viola, which you see in this picture, we put it in his hands. And what happened was magical. He began playing flawlessly. Um, he was smiling. You see that big smile in that picture. And this was the first time that we saw the real David. And this is what led to Mind Melody uh, being born. So just like David, there are over 5 million seniors, 65 and older living with Alzheimer's in the US. And our organization um, prior to COVID worked with over 50 healthcare facilities in South Florida. And as soon as COVID hit, um, since we're in the healthcare industry, we were basically down to zero. And we had to rebuild and pivot our entire program to uh, serve um, our seniors and our, our long-term care facilities virtually. So thankfully we have been successful and we have been able to make that pivot. And um, you know, part of that process got me thinking, how can we reach more people like David who are aging in place? So we know that this disease not only affects individuals living with it, but also the family members that care for them, just like Jane. And so Jane, um, she is you know, 50 years old. She's a working professional. Um, she's very stressed out and worried. Um, she's trying to care take care of her kids, of her husband, and she's a caregiver for her mom who has um, dementia. And Living with dementia is very, very challenging. Um, it affects our daily living, things that we may take for granted, like making a cup of coffee or getting dressed in the morning. Those types of activities become very challenging and it can also be very taxing on the caregiver that is dealing and, and trying to help their, their loved one through it. So our solution was, okay, why, do, why let's try to find Jane on Facebook. Maybe we can reach her there. So we looked for her in, uh, you know, throughout the United States, um, you know, her age 50 and above, um, woman that spoke English, um, that was married in the top 5% of zip codes and that also liked the Alzheimer's Association. So uh, my thought process was that if, um, you know, Jane likes the Alzheimer's Association, maybe she has a loved one, um, that has dementia and Alzheimer's and that we might be a good solution for her. So we uh, spent $110 on ads. Our first ad was the awareness ad and I spent $30 on that one. And we got um, some good impressions, some clicks, um, no um, sales. We did have a, a form there. And then we ran the lead generation ad. Um, that ad had a lot of um, button clicks, but no uh, lead generations from that. So my biggest ahas during the program was that making an ad um, is very challenging, but Lumen5 helps. Um, I had no idea that there were stock images and videos that you could piece together to tell a story. And it's amazing. You can get lost in there for hours. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's, it's quite challenging to master. Um, I also learned a lot of the terminology and, and the Facebook backend, which I thought I had no idea about. I had no idea that Facebook business manager existed or, you know, what retargeting was or what lead generation or core audience or lookalike audience. I had no idea what those terms are. And now I feel, you know, very confident about uh, those terms and how to, how to use them. Uh, so that gave me a pretty good grasp on digital marketing as well as the other, um, you know, tools that we learned like MailChimp and um, 
I'm forgetting the name, the if and then that software that automizes um, all of the you know different channels. And if I were to hire an agency, I would know what they would be talking about. So I wouldn't just be in the dark. So I thought that was also really important. So what's next for us is um, I'm planning on restarting the process and uh, running another awareness ad. Um, then after that, retargeting the people that watched that video. Uh, but instead of doing a lead generation form, uh, using either the traffic to a landing page or messages to WhatsApp and uh, Facebook Messenger, and I'm leaning more towards the messages. And then after that, um, once we have more of a list, retarget the um, create a lookalike audience from a list of emails that we have, and then repeat the entire process again. So that is my that's my next step, as well as um, you'll hear from one of our, our biz zoomers. Uh, his success in, in Latin America, and I, I would like to try some ads there as well. Um, so that's that's what we're up to next. And I want to thank um, all the coaches and all of the um, you know peers in our class for for being so helpful uh, during this process. Thank you, Christina. Thank you so much. I mean, what a beautiful heart based uh, business uh, you're running. Um, you, you know. One can feel the, um, the, the energy and, and love that you put uh, into this work and it's beautiful work. I think a lot of the class didn't even know about the power and magic of music in, in the elderly and especially those with uh, cognitive um, you know, um, uh, issues going on. And, um, <clears throat> and so that indicates to me that there's a lot of education in this field because a lot of the world, most of the world is not aware of this. And so it means that your marketing um, could have an educational component, component, which means awareness ads, retargeting, and then um, some automation in that follow-up, especially if it's like follow-up through emails or, or, you know, you can have like downloadable assets, uh, like videos on your landing page, especially that show, you know, uh, kind of what happens. Um, it could be written. Uh, downloadable assets like Monica does. Um, in, in terms of messaging, it's a little bit harder to figure out what the automation is like until you like message with a bunch of people and then you start to see what the questions are and what people are looking for. And then you can start to create the automation within messaging. But anyway, what a great journey you're on and uh, you know, thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Alex. Christina, it was, uh, again, I also enjoyed very much um, you know, it's funny because uh, I don't know if we ever talked about it, but my uh, mother-in-law lives with us and uh, she won uh, an hour session with one of your musicians. Um, and that, yeah. <laughs> I finally found the card. I go, it, it's, it's similar. It has to be. And it, it really was. It was your company. Yes. So you're one of your very talented musicians came out um, and it was uh, very meaningful for her. And I do think, uh, you know, I do think there is a, a pathway there for you, kind of like what Alex was saying that, um, you know, something you might try. I, I like the, um, the educational part of it. And I did introduce you to a doctor in uh, music therapy uh, who's been written up and has done research in this area. Maybe there's a way for her to be involved with this video that, er that Alex is suggesting and do some education. I also think that you might have something to offer the uh, some of the daycare and care centers that are now closed that are doing weekly zooms. So, for example, my mother my mother in law has a weekly zoom with the place uh, Dayscapes where she used to go um, when we went shopping or whatever. And so that might be another another angle that you could take, and that might uh, result in some group classes. So. But it was it was really I, I agree with what Alex and Dan both said. You're doing a wonderful service and we just need to scale it up. Thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to actually introduce my mentor and Christina's, the co-founder of the VMT, Bob Nelson, to uh, reflect a little bit on Christina's journey, both in BizHack and throughout the time that he's been mentoring her. Hi, hi, Dan. Uh, hi, Christina. Hi, everyone. 
Hey, it's, I'm just so proud to have uh, to be associated with you and to be uh, to be a mentor and advisor to both of you for for uh, I guess the last three or four years now. And um, uh, I, I just think Dan, you've you've just done a terrific job, come a long way, created a fantastic network, and had a, a great impact on on the business community. And I want to congratulate you. And uh, I'm so proud that now you're a worldwide organization. Uh, and uh, I'll look forward to more of that. Uh, Christina, you're, you're just fantastic. You've, you've run this not-for-profit for, for uh, three or four years now. You got smashed in the face with COVID and went from touching hundreds of lives to zero. And I'll, I have to tell you that, uh, Dan, you are a lifeline to companies like Christina's that, uh, that just had nowhere to go but online. And you've really helped guide the way. And Alex, it's great to see you again. And the great work you're doing. So uh, congratulations to everybody. You know, I just did a, I just did a um, workshop where I was trying to explore why I do what I do. And I came up with a line that describes, I think beautifully how I've lived my whole life and why BizHack means so much to me. And it's, I champion the underdogs so they can transform their lives. And what, make, what makes Christina so special is not only do I believe that this program has transformed your life, but it's going to transform the lives of so many seniors who need you more than ever, who've never felt more at risk, more alone, more isolated, and that you can bring music and love to them in a way that's more urgently needed than ever before. It's been an utter pleasure and honor to be a partner with you on this journey. And thank you, BMT, for putting us in touch. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bob and Dan. <laughs> All right, we're gonna call a little bit of an audible, which is we're gonna go skip right to the most fun and important award of the night. And then we're gonna go back to you, Alejandro. Uh, Nathan Kruger, you, uh, you'll be up in a second. Um, okay, here we go. Nathan has a, uh, a personal issue. He's going to have to hop, uh, off the zoom in a sec. So we're going to, uh, make sure he has time to do his presentation. Every semester, the participants in the course pick one person who best exemplifies the qualities of a digital marketer and an ideal partner on the BizHack learning journey. We give that person, which is selected purely by their peers, something called the BizHacker Award. It's the highest honor we, vote, we have at BizHack. And I am so overjoyed to share with you uh, our BizHack Award winner. The Biz Hacker Award celebrates people who embrace the new, who constantly experiment, who dare to fail gloriously, who lift others up, and who never say die. And Nathan Kruger is the runaway winner of the Biz Hack Award in the history of Biz Hack. We have never had more votes for a single individual than we had for Nathan. We're so blessed to have had you part of this cohort. This was a hard cohort for a lot of folks. A lot of tough emotions came up. We're under stress and duress because of the economy and because of the uh, economics and social situation. And honestly, Nathan, you saved us all from filing into a, uh, a sinkhole of despair as we struggled through learning this really hard skill. You gave countless hours of your time to your peers and they have rewarded you in kind with our highest award. So it is with my genuine uh, uh, um, joy that we present the Biz Hacker Award to Nathan Kruger of Determination uh, Pest Control. And we're very excited to hear about your real life campaign. Nathan. <laughs> Thanks. <Wow>. Nice picture. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so I share my screen, I would imagine. Share. Uh, hello, um, Nathan Gerger, Determination Pest Control. I joined BizHack for recurring revenue lead generation. Oh, I have to, what's going on here? In 1982, we moved from Minnesota to the outskirts of Henderson, Nevada. On my way home from school and on the weekends, I would walk through the desert to catch lizards, tarantulas, snakes, and bring them home. At a young age, I was very interested in the insect and reptile world. After high school, I didn't have the financial opportunity to attend college. So after bouncing around between entry level jobs for a few years, I decided it was time to find a job that I could eventually open my own business. After working at a large pest control, local pest control company for five years and having a kid to support, I decided it was time to attain my own principal operator's license and take the plunge into self-employment. Throughout my entire life, my dad was self-employed, so I pitched him in becoming partners in a pest control company. In 2013, my dad retired and I bought ownership, his ownership portion to become the sole owner of Determination Pest Control. From the beginning, we were always a 100% commercial business, service business, but in 2017, I wanted to wanted a better customer blend. In those years, those years I unsuccessfully ran my own Google PPC campaigns and tried other advertising streams that generated low customer acquisition. In the spring of 2020, I completed a Facebook ads course and had really good results. Wanting to further my education and to better my campaign, it was suggested to me that, that I take BizHack Academy. Yes, I have a pet tortoise. We have a fully self-sustainable tortoise habitat that we built in our backyard. All the plants are edible. His name is King Koopa. A few things that I learned in this course Audience insights, we're a location-based company, so we can only service certain locations, certain audiences, so we're pretty limited there, so we have to be pretty creative with the audience insights. Even more details and ad targeting, and Lumen5 making videos, that's a, just a game changer right there, and then Google check my links. My awareness campaign, we ran an impression, uh, we ran a, a video with 20,000 impressions, 19,600 view throughs for a 97 uh, completion uh, uh, watched. 43 web clicks, campaign spend of $189, $4.39 per web click. We ran a retarget ad of the people that were watching the video, cost a hundred bucks, impression 3,385, Got three leads, $33.33 a lead. That is a little high for us. We want to be below 20. Biggest aha, I had a few. Making videos in Lumen. I was making rudimentary photo ads in my previous campaigns. Like I said, making videos is a game changer. It's all learned right here in BizHack. Google Analytics. I knew very little about Google Analytics coming into this course and opened my eyes to all the things I need to check into more. Uh, not to do too much at once. I got so excited with doing video ads instead of picture ads and that my awareness ad was viewed so many times that I made two more campaigns with two ad sets each and three ads in each ad set. My message got too confusing, even to myself, and I ended up spending $386 on four more leads. I shut off all the campaigns and started over fresh. Uh, problem, solution, result, problem. PPC cost of customer acquisition runs about $250 or 12% of the customer lifetime value. Solution was to find a cheaper way of online advertising through uh, Facebook ads. Result, Facebook ads cost of customer acquisition for us coming into BizHack was 2.8% of customer lifetime value. Uh, what's next? To, me, re to meet our recurring customer target of year 2022, we must add an average of 20 recurring customers per month. Looking at our past results with picture ads, we should be able to obtain this much sooner. Thanks to the help of BizHack. I will be doing more online classes in the future and just doing more. And one other thing I've learned now is making logo videos. And then uh, I did run a recent ad Charged 100, it cost $127, 10,000 impression, eight leads, uh, sold four for an expected customer lifetime value of 
$880, and that would be an ad cost of 1.85% of customer lifetime value. So we've already cut it down from 2.8 to 1.8, just with one, uh, one biz hack. A few other things, I'm working on my landing pages for our newly added weed control service. Uh, those should be up in two weeks, uh, doing more experiment with audiences. And we're right now testing landing pages uh, versus uh, landing pages of our contact form on our website versus the Facebook lead form. And the other one that I will be doing is running ads for my wife's business on her Facebook page as well. Nathan, uh, yes, is that it? Are you, are you done? Yeah, that's it. I'm fantastic. Well, congratulations, Nathan. I mean, uh, it's been such a pleasure to have you in class. Your positivity and and your support, and uh, you know, you've been uh, you've been a fantastic student, and uh, I'm so honored that uh, you were you were part of the uh, the team here, the student team. Um, thank you for that. I. Um, you know, there's so much to say, Nathan, and I know you have to jump off, but I think you have a real content play, first of all, in keywords and beefing up the content on your website. So I think organic SEO is important uh, for you and, and you can improve that. Yeah. Um, and along with the organic SEO is going to be um, pay-per-click advertising because people are searching for pest control. So you want to be able to pop up when people do so. And I think also uh, content in terms of you may be able to video when you're doing certain types of uh, services. You may be able to create videos out of that, uh, instructional videos, yeah. and, and also I think advertising from those videos. I think that that's an opportunity. And that's a social media play as well, which you can post organically or you can make ads out of. And finally, you know, your cost per lead goes down the more you're advertised and the more uh, Facebook understands who your audience is, the cost per lead goes down over time yeah. as you give Facebook more of a chance to serve your ads. So anyway, fantastic. Thank you so much. And King, I, lo I love King Koopa. <laughs> He's our mascot. <laughs> He's awesome. Thanks, guys. So Nathan, um, I just want to say that um, I have uh, learned a lot about uh, living in Las Vegas and, and uh, I don't want to sign up for it, but <laughs> I appreciate the education that you've given me about scorpions and uh, rats and so on. Um, but I think for me more than anything, Nathan, it was just a joy to work with you because you are so positive and you are just so fun to be around. And so it doesn't oh, matter you. if we're talking about scorpions or, or rats or cockroaches or palmetto bugs. Um, I, I really enjoy, I really enjoy you and, um, I, I know you're going to do very well. So thank you. And Thanks. thank you for my logo. I, I love the logo you did for me. It was beautiful. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> you're welcome. It was fun. I'm having a lot of fun with that right now. What do you use to create those, uh, animated logos? It's not a free app, but it's called videos, V I D D Y O Z E. So I paid, I think it was $147 for the, for the templates and that's the basic kit. So if anybody doesn't want to pay that, you can send me your logo. I'll make you one. <laughs> <laughs> we will take you up on that. Um, you got it. I, I also just, Some people wanted, have. yeah, I, I wanted to say that um, I asked the group who you personally helped this semester. And I want to read the list of names because it's impressive. Ted Van Cleve, uh, Cheryl Cattell, you helped her animate her logo. Uh, Michelle from S4 Study Skills. Uh, Holly Altman, you helped her get her privacy statement. Uh, Christabel Ofori in Ghana, you helped create her lead form and her privacy policy. And apparently you spearheaded the group of seven, uh, not the Chicago group of seven, but the uh, group of seven Bazoomers who met uh, outside of class. Um, that was uh, you, Mandy Jenkins, Monica Glacier, uh, Michelle, as I mentioned, Kaylee, Jessica Graham, and Juan Gonzalez. So um, you've touched, gosh, that's about half the class personally. Um, and uh, I just want to say that you represent everything that we look for and aspire to have uh, in a biz hacker. So thank you. And congratulations on the biz hacker award. Thanks. Thanks. It's awesome. I wasn't expecting anything. I didn't even know about it. So that's awesome. <laughs> Perfect. <clears throat> All right. Uh, well, you go off, do what you need to do. Be well, my friend.
Uh, we'll Thank get you. much. And okay. then um, we're going to go back now to the presentation um, and Alejandro. Uh, and then we're going to um, run through some thank you gifts and the, um, the, the certificates and then a little musical surprise. <clears throat> Alejandro Roa is our first business from Mexico, and he had just extraordinary results for his company, Queenie House. In fact, with a tiny ad spend and a minimum uh, of oversight, he was able to make uh, more than $14,000 in sales uh, on an ad spend of a few hundred dollars. Uh, if you want to learn how he did it, he's going to share with you, in this case study, Alejandro Roa of Queenie House. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. I'm from Mexico City. I'm going to share my screen. And, well, it, uh, you can see it? Yes, we can. Perfect. Well, I, I'm going to talk the, the story of me. I'm Alex. I want to tell you my story. When I was eight years old, I told my father I wanted to start my own business. It was something I couldn't get out of my eight years head. As a good father, he helped me and bought me a gumball ball machine. So I decided to put it in a children's hair salon. Every Saturday, I was there to collect the coins. I grew up with the desire to always have my own ball machine. Two years ago, that dream came true, and I decided to, came, to make a leap of faith and start my own company, Queenie House, a home of creatives. We're, uh, where we specialize in creating content, original content, and digital strategies. Our priority is to help our customers reaching their goals. These days, we have the opportunity to work with, every, uh, with very important brands in Mexico City. Our short-term goal is to position us as one of the most important agency here in Mexico City. I'm Alex, that's my story. Uh, one thing I can tell you about this BizHack uh, course that we all took is that uh, for me it was very important to, to know how to create digital strategies because I'm on the sales department. So I don't really know how to create I didn't knew how to create uh, digital strategies. So this makes a uh, game changer for me because I learned how to do it. Um, this is my first ad. Uh, this ad uh, was focused on awareness. So one thing that I want to try is how I can create awareness with the content. So this is the ad that I made uh, was uh, uh, from the man and woman to 80 to 34 age, uh, location Mexico City, interest, coffee shop, pets, dogs, demographics, art, entertainment, single in a relationship and married. Uh, this was the second ad that, that we run. Uh, this particularly is a very most important because it was the, the one that uh, we can generate uh, sales. So this is the, the, the result. If you can see it on the first ad, we spent uh, $15. We have 30, uh, 34,000 impressions, one reach of 36,000 impressions, interaction of 4,000. Uh, our CTR was an 11% and my cost per click was 0%. 0.05 cents dollar. So I think it's very, very great results. Uh, and the second ad was the same, $15, 8,000 impressions, one reach of 6,000, conversion with messages start, 10 persons uh, write us, send us a message to the Facebook, uh, to the Facebook page. And we convert uh, eight of this person that, that growth to us. So we become uh, eight customers at the second ad that represents uh, $14,000 about like two weeks. So it's very amazing for me to learn how 
can I uh, make digital strategies by myself without uh, uh, using my team? So it's great for me. Uh, my biggest aha is I think the content is the most important thing on, on this social media world because I think the content is big for us. So if we have a great content, we can share the uh, confident uh, confi or, or trust. We can make a trust uh, company to the to the users. The helpful tools, Canva, I love Canva. Uh, and the most amazing thing is that uh, social media is in constant changing. We, we need to, to be able and in constant preparation and experimentation to see how all these new techniques and softwares and all the things can help us to reach our goals. So I'm Alex, sorry for my <laughs> English and thank you, Biscuit family. Alejandro, your English is uh, great and uh, you know, your results are uh, fantastic. Uh, you know, I'm impressed by how much reach you got for such a low budget, you got a lot of reach. And yes. also I'm very impressed by the uh, conversions you got and the sales. So I think, uh, I mean, you you really had a fantastic success and uh, I think you can just build on it. Uh, your advertising is very creative. Um, so I think you have everything uh, to succeed. So congratulations, thank you. Thanks a lot, Alex. You know, um, Lilia, my partner at BizHack, um, is from Mexico. And so I said to her, Lilia, we need a student from Mexico. And uh, of course, overachiever that she is, she got us two students and those two students uh, were the best performing participants in the cohort. Uh, so I wanted to give you, Lilia, a chance to just talk about how you recruited them and, and a little bit about how you feel being able to bring folks from your homeland into the BizHack family. Right, I mean, thank you. It's great to, to see this, this case study from um, people I know. I mean, actually, I don't know personally Alejandro. He was a recommendation uh, from my father. Uh, he actually studied in the same university where he teaches and where he works. So, uh, and yeah, I was like having a real conversation with my dad to say like, we really need like good candidates. So uh, we had a couple of them. So Alex was uh, the runner up. I mean, Alex was like the, the winner uh, of this uh, selection that we did. And I'm really glad that he got like amazing results. Uh, congratulations. I hope that this course uh, taught you a lot more uh, new things that you can now apply. And also the, the other two candidates um, from Tebeo Company uh, also were really a good fit for this. So uh, I'm glad that uh, from Mexico City and here in Miami and people, uh, uh, Christabel from Africa and somebody else from New Zealand, now we're all able to be in the same space to learn a lot from, from, from BizHack. So welcome to the family, Alex. Thank you, Lilia. Thank you a lot. So uh, how should we grow into Mexico? It seems like it's a ripe market for uh, digital marketing. Yes, let's do that. Let's, we're now online all over the world. So we should have an online uh, BESAC Academy in Mexico City, for sure. I can help. <laughs> Please do. You're going to be our ambassador. Yeah, your, your amazing results will help us. One of the things I want to point out is Latin America, including Mexico, have some of the lowest advertising rates in Facebook worldwide. And so we've consistently seen from our Latin American participants in Venezuela and Argentina and Mexico and Colombia that they get pretty extraordinary reach for relatively small dollars. So uh, not at all surprised that you're doing so well. And this is a competitive advantage and a way for you to grow your agency uh, into the preeminent agency in Mexico City like you aspire. So we wish you the very best and thank you so much for being a part of the uh, learning journey. Thanks, Dan. So I'm gonna share my screen. Um, we're going to, speaking of learning journey. So this was your learning journey, everybody. These were the 20 objectives that we set out to teach you and your self-assessment from when you started to when you ended about where your knowledge lied. 
uh, incredible, incredible performance. I did want to remind you guys that um, we're going to be going through your certificate ceremony now, but in order for you to actually complete the course and get your mailed certificate, uh, you do need to finish the last assignment, which is the digital marketing test and the final on um, final feedback survey. We use that information to create a learning journey report, which is personalized to you, which really is a valuable uh, part of your experience. So please don't, if you haven't uh, done them yet, please uh, prioritize that so we can get you your certificates. Um, we're going to do a quick raffle and then on to the certificates. Uh, Jessica Graham is offering a one-hour consultation in any communication challenge, and the winner is? Tracy Antle. Welcome, Tracy, to the BizHack uh, team. Uh, we have here um, Andy Bybee is offering a 30-day supply of core complete supplement. For Samantha Miller. Congrats, Samantha. Frankie Telford of Old Bull Athletics, another buddy of mine from the 10KSB Goldman Sachs program. We have a complimentary training session online or in person. For Samuel Darko. Holly Altman, a dear friend from Baker Pies. She is offering her berry pie with three R's, uh, which I love. Um, mm -hmm. And the winner is? Sylvia Brugger. Yay, Sylvia. And then Michelle Sagaline is offering one complimentary tutoring session from her tutoring company, which is for school-aged children. For Todd Billings. All right, Todd, one of our biz hackers who was uh, a big winner last, uh, a big uh, performer last semester and sent Andy our way, his partner. I wanna um, put on stage our incredible uh, teaching team. Alex, you were magisterial, uh, as they like to say, in the way you managed uh, what was a very emotional and uh, taxing semester for many of us. Um, you are a uh, extraordinary uh, marketer, business owner, worked at IBM in constant contact, and you were also a diplomat, uh, having um, kind of carried on your father's uh, tradition as a former diplomat. Our, our, uh, you've met also our marketing coaches, Cheryl Cattell of Personal Legend Coaching, Ricardo Barris of Me Group, and Tatiana, the CMO of Happy B. And so with that, Alex, I give you the floor to announce the certificate, uh, this, the graduates of BizHack Cohort 15, the Bizoomers. Congratulations to everyone and uh, Ruth Ann Smith, Uh, Nathan Kruger, Alejandro Roa. You know, I wish I wish this were uh, you know in real life so I could hand out certificates, but you know this is it is what it is. So it's virtual. So I'm just reading out your names, uh, and these are your certificates that you're going to receive in the mail. Uh, Diane Mulligan, uh, Amy Palma, John Thornton. Uh, Hiba George Stem, Holly Altman, Tilada Gibson, Allison Morgan, Kaylee Blair, Raul Mendez, Juan Gonzalez. Andy Bybee, Frankie Telfort, Helen Callier, Jessica L, Chris Sneed, Pamela Hall, Monica Glacier Wells, Jordan Sherman, Brett Spodak, Kelly Moyer, Jessica Graham, Christina Rodriguez, Jorge Ortiz, Mandy Jenkins, Ted Van Cleve, Christabel Ofori, Pete Coast, Shauna Spiller, David Stem. Michelle Sagalin, 
Yolanda Voiles. And I hope I didn't mispronounce any of your names, and I probably did, and I, I'm sorry if I did. Um, but congratulations to uh, all of you, and thank you. This has been the most quiet graduation where you can all cheer and put the user reaction button. Woo Woo you can unmute yourself. Woohoo! I'm used to having it on mute. <laughs> Thank you so much. So for the ones uh, who don't have your uh, video on, please do. This is the time. We're going to take a group picture. Congratulations, everyone. So that the, OK, perfect. Uh, Tommy, Lucy, Samuel, Kaylee, Other, John. If you can put your videos on, that would be amazing. So, okay, so hold your pose, smile, open your eyes, one, two, one more, because there's several screens. Wait a second. Okay, one, two, three. I'm going to the next slide. Oh, people from Ghana, yay. Yay, <laughs> the Bell's family's here. Okay, one, two. Okay, now the crazy one. You're very serious right now. So. All right, everybody put your hands around your head. Do something silly. This is the fun one. One, two. Take another, take another. Change your pose. I'm going to move to the other screen. So and one, two. Another Ooh. one. Okay, one, two. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Amazing. Congratulations again. You know, there's so much that I love about graduation, but like Alex, I do miss being there to to hand you your, um, you know, your certificates in person. There's some things that just can't be done uh, as effectively online, but I'm, I'm so proud of you guys. Um, let me share the screen for our final round of amazing gifts. You guys were so generous with these thank you gifts. Um, you know, and, and then we're going to have our musical surprise. Um, one thing I do want to say is the reason we have thank you gifts as a tradition is not only to promote your businesses to the larger community, but also because we recognize that it takes a community for you to be able to be in here and to do this work. So, uh, Christabel's family is on and welcome from Ghana. Uh, and to all of you, you know, we know that there are husbands and wives uh, business partners and 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 employees who made it possible for you to take the time over these past six weeks and uh, do your very best. So we we know that they as much as you deserve to be thanked, uh, and so that's who these gifts are really dedicated to. So we have Christina Rodriguez offering a free virtual session to improve the quality of life for individuals with neurological impairments. That goes to Bob Nelson. Yay, that one I did on purpose. Uh, so Bob, anybody in your network who you think would benefit from that, uh, we hope you enjoy it. Um, we have a free green planet pillow from Juan Gonzalez of Best Rest USA. Goes to David Wells. Congrats, Thanks. David. We have a free one hour training on how to value your home. This is Pamela Hall, a uh, realtor. For Jamie Livingstone. Perfect. We have a free 30 minute webinar for parents, eight ways to keep your students focused. I want that. Uh, the <laughs> tag line of successful study skills. For Emily Grace. I love that offer, good job. And finally, our grand prize, Ted Van Cleve Photography, a 16 by 20 print, limited edition, signed in number, $250 value, and the winner is? Bo Aquario. Congratulations. And thank you, Ted, for giving that great prize. I do, want, I do want to remind you all applications are open for cohort 16, which starts in 10 days. Uh, we are um, excited to welcome another group. You guys are our best source of new business. 
Um, in fact, Cheryl, did you want to announce that we're launching a new referral program to kind of sweeten the pot for our referrers? Yes, so you'll be receiving an email um, with an invitation to share the gift of learning with friends and family, and um, we will reward you with uh, a latte for every single person that we're able to reach. So you should be watching out for that. There you go. Thank you. It's Cheryl is helping me uh, implement a new, more systematic referral uh, campaign that actually helps pay you back for introducing us to folks. So thank you for that, Cheryl. Uh, as a reminder, we do have a scholarship program for minority and women-owned businesses. Uh, these are the key links. Um, we're having an info session about the scholarships uh, this uh, Friday at noon. So please, when you do send uh, your folks our way, uh, uh, we'll hopefully be able to uh, connect with them at noon. You know, this is part of our BizHack Live speaker series. Next week, I'm going to be doing a 90-minute session on the five pillars of digital campaigns, one of my signature presentations. We're going to have an amazing panel discussion from ICABA. Uh, we're going to be talking about getting heard in a crowded world with Yvette Grove, a speaker and author, talking about exponential marketing strategy from EXO with Gabrielle and Karina. And then we're going to talk about free tools to find your ideal customer online in partnership with Emerge Americas that's coming up in December. Uh, all of you guys are gonna be signed up for a season pass as a thank you gift to you as a congratulations for graduating. So we hope to see you every Wednesday at 12.30 at our amazing BizHack Live series. And then with that, I wanna uh, welcome uh, Ricardo Barris, uh, also known as Ricky Ricardo, back to the stage, Grammy Award winning musician, and Closet Marketer. Uh, Ricky Ricardo, you want to tell us a little bit about this song we're about to play? Well, thanks, Dan. I, uh, I'm in transit, so my video is not, uh, I can't show my video. But um, so this, this, uh, this song by Ricky Anthony really came out in the last two cohorts that um, had such a tremendous experience and we we had folks in that in that cohort who contracted COVID and fought through uh, while, while they were doing the program um, and there was just so much emotion that uh, that came to on that, that that cohort and it led me to just give considerations to the thought and I decided to pen, uh, pen some Pen, pen a lyrics, a few lyrics about uh, exactly what I think um, was going on. And it was really just sort of a hat, lifting our hats off to, uh, to the group for just doing, persevering, doing everything that they needed to do and, and just pushing on through. So this song is really about your resilience, your determination, your ability to stick to it. And, um, you know, just to congratulate you for just doing what you you needed to do. You needed to push. You needed to determine. Uh, you needed to fight. And that's exactly what you do in this cohort. Is just listen to the words because that's, that's where the message is. I hope um, it resonates with you as well. Perfect. Thank you, Rick. Line and knowing that you did it somehow. While on the journey, there were many things you didn't know how. It's because of your openness you learn. Look what you've earned. Yeah. And as you go wrong, planting those seeds of all the lessons learned to reap what you sow. Not being afraid to tell and share to everyone you know with complete openness to learn 
they too can earn. I lay my hat off to you and you and you for doing all the things you need to do. It's time giving up. Oh, you fall through and through. You should be too. Hats off to you. And with that, throw that hat off. Congratulations, everyone. Uh, it has been an amazing journey. And I look so forward to you being part of our vibrant alumni community, to me serving your friends and your families in future courses, and to this amazing teaching team, which will be back in 10 days for our next cohort of BizHack Academy. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thanks. See you Thanks. online. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. We'll stay in touch via WhatsApp. And, and yeah. also, <laughs> you'll, you'll hear from us. See you at BizHack Live, everybody. Thank you. Great job, everyone.